giving tradies and contractors around the globe the tools to run a modern business. You're listening to Toolbox Talks from the Site Shed. Now here's your host, Matt Jones. Hello and welcome back to Toolbox Talks on the Site Shed. My name's Matt Jones and I am joined with me today for the third episode of the series we're doing on empire building with Scott Galatly from Bolo Empire. Scott, thanks for joining us. Yep, good to be here again, Matty. Thank you. Weather hasn't gotten any better, I see. <laughs> no. no, it certainly hasn't. So if you missed the last couple of episodes, Scott and I, we've been discussing the critical areas of building an empire. In the first episode, we were talking about systemization and implementing and employing systems and processes into your business. And during that episode, we spoke about turning your intellectual knowledge into intellectual property. We spoke about replacing yourself and using systems to do so. We also uh, touched on providing operating procedures, which can help your the day-to-day running of tasks within your organization. We also spoke about how systems being implemented into your business can form and does form an acquirable asset. In the last episode, we spoke about building a database and the database in the form of building a list of customers, so people that you've done work for in the past, people that you can market to and potentially turn them into customers in the future. And we've also talked about using that list to market, nurture, and potentially gain strategic leverage with um, other companies. And then we spoke about also, of course, with your database becoming an acquirable asset as do systems and processes. In this episode, which is the final episode, we're going to be talking about measuring your metrics. And I'm really glad that I've got Scott here to... uh, talk to me about this because it's something that I openly admit to not being brilliant at myself and I I do have people (laughs) uh, in right places that can help me with this and I hope that you guys learn as much from this as uh, I'm sure I'm going to. So um, Scott, we might as well get started with this episode. So tell me, what is a metrics? What are we measuring? Ah, well, what are your numbers? We're talking about knowing your numbers, Matty. And, um, you know, we're talking about knowing how well you're doing with your sales. We're talking about getting insights uh, into how efficient your business is. We're talking about knowing where your business is at so that you can make smarter decisions. Mm -hmm. That's actually what it's all about. So really, you know, your systems, your database, it all leads in the end to being able to make better decisions by knowing your numbers. Yeah. Okay, and being a smarter business person. So by knowing your numbers in you know, relating to whatever field it might be. It could be accounts, it could be uh, referrals, it mm-hmm. could be inquiries, yep. whatever. If you know your numbers around it, then I suppose you can improve it, right? That's right. You, you can't start to improve something until you've got a baseline to know where it's at to begin with. Yeah. So that's the general principle. So can I add to that also, Matt, that um, when it does come to selling your business, that if you've got numbers to present to somebody that's actually interested in acquiring, you're going to give them a really clear picture of where your business is at. It's okay. going to be really clear. There's nothing that can be hidden because <laughs> the numbers don't lie. It's proof yep. that you've, you've got a successful business. They can't talk you down. What about, um, I suppose one thing that I've always been A, curious and B, a little bit apprehensive to employ is um, projections mm. based off, you know, past um, experiences or past you know, uh, what do you call it? Figures. Yeah, past figures. How, yeah. <clears throat> how do projections work practically? And let's let's put it from a, let's try and make this as relatable as we can, I suppose, to uh, like a service-based business. But I mean, what, what what kind of things could I potentially be trying to predict and why would I bother? Mm. The, the biggest one is finding patterns. Right. So if you can look at your previous data uh, and see, you know, where, what products or what services you're selling at what time periods during the year, you can start to predict um, when to, say, put special offers out or when to ramp up or ramp down your staff, if that's actually possible. Yeah. Um, when you know, you know, instead of just sort of instinctively knowing, oh, yeah, we're going, into a, uh, we're going into a hard part of the year, actually being able to prove it and knowing up front, well, if, you know, the period starts, we know in September 1, People start looking at aircon. Yeah. So, you know, because I'm a business owner, I've systemized my business, I'm going to go to China and go buy a stack of nice cheap aircon units that I can sell, put them in a warehouse, and then boom, come September 1, my um, email database is going out and I'm going to increase on my figures from last year. Right. So now I can say, well, because I've got the history, I can see what I did last year. I've set a target. I've 
20% growth or 50% growth. And that drives me to achieve that. So knowing and measuring your metrics allows you to forecast in the space of like historical mm. events. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Yeah. That was a bit of a segue. I didn't plan on talking about that. <laughs> it's the most important part. Yeah. Well, I mean, how, how, you did. How, do you, how do you measure metrics? How do you go about it? Well, it's all about capturing data in, in the same vein as our last talk. You know, we talked about capturing contacts. Yeah and capturing information to build up your database, well, you've got to capture your actuals. You know, construction guys are excellent at this. So they should be capturing their actuals um, in their construction database to measure them against what they budgeted. Yeah. Same process applies. It doesn't matter what industry you're in. It doesn't matter if it's sales or delivery of your product or service um, or whatever. It's, you know, um, how many leads are coming in the door? What how many leads are actually taking our product and service? The difference is our conversion rate. How's our conversion rate changing over time based on how we're changing things in our sales process? Right. So, you know, that's just one example yep. in sales. But we might be able to say, well, if we're now converting way less work than what we were doing in the past, what's changed? Yeah. Or if we're converting more, what's changed? And then make more smarter decisions around that. So maybe if you know, within our organisation, we made a tweak in, okay, well, let's say, for example, we put a, a new technician out in the field mm-hmm. and they were out there selling. Yep. And as a result, profits decreased mm-hmm. over the course of a certain period. Would, are you saying that the metrics you could then tie back to that specific yeah. action? Well, you, you wouldn't even know that you, your profits have decreased unless you're actually starting to measure that stuff to begin with. Right. If you're not starting to capture well, what, how much are we selling, how often are we selling, you know, what's the value in, in a period of time to begin with, to know and set a baseline, you know, any, you know all, all the construction listeners out there are going to know this stuff already. It's just applying the same principles in a different line. Yeah. Set a baseline of what you were doing, make a change, see how the result or the metric that you measured changes and that difference is going to be whether it's a positive or a negative change. Right. So instead of, I suppose, at the end of the financial year, looking at your balance statement and going, oh, my God, we're down yeah. 50 grand. Yeah. It could be a matter of saying, oh, I can see we're down 50 grand, and this is tying back to tying the back to that I did this. Over the last 12 months, we've had this employed, this employed, this employed, and then this has not been productive, this has been productive, this has been the most productive, blah, blah, blah. So yeah. you can really break it down and sort of, hone in on what the problem is, yeah. is that right? And, and to go one step further, you shouldn't be getting to the end of the year and going and having that, um, oh, <coughs> shite moment, I'm yeah. oh, actually 50 grand in the hole. You're seeing the change over time. Yeah. You know how much you're selling over time or how much, how much it's costing you to deliver over time and you'll be able to start to see where that's changing. And well before you get to the end of the year and get your big surprise um, from your accountant, you're going to be able to actually make smart changes to your business yeah. to prevent it from occurring. So how am I going to, like, what am I going to use to measure these metrics? What, what are there tools out there? Like what, mm. as a tradesperson, what would you suggest is a, is a good way of measuring these things? Yeah, well, it, it comes back to the, the two previous topics we talked about. Didn't they line up quite nicely? Yeah. Um, uh, quite ironic. First, you know, the database, which is capturing the information. Yeah. Again, whether it's your sales or what you're delivering and how fast you're delivering it and what it's costing to deliver. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the system, which part of your system is that they do the work and they record the results. It's all integrated into one. And once you're doing that, you've got the tool to record it um, and the system and the process to make people actually do it, that's it. You're gathering the information and then it's just a, a matter of reporting on that database. Yeah. And so when we're reporting, typically, I mean, is this something that we do pen and paper or is this something we do digitally? Like how do you mm. – I mean, I can imagine trying to do – this sounds like a very manually labour-intensive task trying to get all this data together. Are there tools that can help you streamline it? Yeah, absolutely. So it, it does still first – you know, first of all, your system should be built around capturing information. Yeah. Um, but then the tools, it could be a timesheet tool and there's heaps of electronic timesheet oh, tools yeah. okay. um, where you're entering time against a particular job. Yeah. Uh, if it's your CRM, you know, we talked about a, a sales process database in our last podcast. It's about capturing the sale value yeah. and maybe how long it took to sell, you know, to get your lead to sale effort yeah, okay. or the cost of sales. Actually, and while you say that, I might even add, 
you sort of said it like how long it took to close the sale, but then how many touch points maybe yeah. you needed within that yeah. period in order to, to close yeah. the sale? Because every touch point or every phone call you have to make or email you have to send, it's cost. Or whatever it is, it's cost. That's yeah. right. So, so, so you work out your cost of sales that would have not been you know quantitative before. Your cost of sales might have just been like stock or inventory yeah. previously, and it didn't actually really represent the cost of selling a particular job. Yeah. A lot of people get a rude shock when they find out that they're running at a constant loss. Yeah. Because <laughs> it sells, you know, they need to actually put, you, you realise from your metrics that you have to put your prices up. Yeah. I know as well there's a lot of programs out there that actually give you visibility over mm. some of your metrics. I mean, we use, you know, for email marketing, for example, I know an active campaign, you know, and MailChimp, in fact, all of them pretty much. Yeah. They all pretty much have, Metrics over things like, okay, how many emails have you sent? How many people have opened that email? How many people have clicked on a link in the email? Yep. You know, how engaged people are, like that kind of that kind of stuff. Yep. So you can kind of track those sort of things. Yep. Um, I know within, you know, accounting packages, so in Xero, you can, you can, there's metrics associated with Xero as well, obviously, because, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what really matters, that's what right? Like, yeah. What, what are the things at the end? It's probably the bit in between that as well, like how you're delivering your work is the other area. So, you know, your MailChimp and your active campaigns and all that sort of stuff can do your marketing metrics, your CRM, whether it's a Podio or something else, can do your sales metrics, uh, a job management system, again, whether it's Podio or GeoOp or whatever job manager that's suitable to your industry can give you not only your time sheeting system, yeah. like a great product called Time Camp, I recommend. Yeah. Um, great time sheeting system. You can capture how long it's taking people to do stuff. Yeah. And then at the back end of that, your finance system. So you've sort of got four kind of key areas. And I suppose there. another big one for our listeners as well would be uh, like the metrics over project management. Spot on. And I, I know, I mean, there's a lot of programs out there that are, you know, specifically designed for trade-based businesses in project management. But I mean, that's critical knowing how long, uh, how long certain stages of a job took or expenses that tie mm-hmm. into certain areas of a certain yeah. stage or yeah. how that broke down. Did you make money? Did you lose money? If you don't know that, then how can you improve on it, right? Well, you need to be able to set the baseline of how many hours you expect something to go yeah. and then how many hours it cost. And then, you know, if you're lucky and you bill by the hour, that's good. But if you, you know, if you set fixed price, you need to know what your margins are um, so you can feed that back into your estimating process and keep improving your estimating and improving yeah. your quoting process. So, you know, you talk about lead measures and you've got lag measures. Yeah. And, you know, they're either predictive or um, what's the opposite of predictive? <laughs> unpredictable. Un- unpredictable. <laughs> uh, unpredictable metrics. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and you, you want your metrics to be able to inform and improve your system as well as help you make better decisions and maximise opportunities. Yeah. So the next question I want to ask you was, you know, if, if I started measuring my metrics, what can I expect to improve within my business? But I can probably um, collaborate with you on this because um, recently I've done a lot of this stuff and I suppose you've helped me with a lot of it as well. Uh, you, you've helped me, I suppose, yeah, with trade web guys, with looking at like a, from a forecasting point of view mm-hmm. and like looking at, I suppose, figures that are coming in, yeah. which has been very valuable. Um, but then on the other side, I've also been measuring very much, you know, from a lead capture sort of point of view, you know, how many leads do we specifically need to come into the business in order to, in order to make it A, profitable yep. or B, okay, A, sustainable, B, profitable and, you know, yep. C, rock stars. You know? Yeah, so, exactly. Um, exactly. So, I mean, what, uh, what, what else would you think? Is there anything else there that you, you can see improving or what areas of business can you see improving as a result of employing? Um, tracking and employing and tracking metrics. Yeah, well, as you said, the marketing side and improving the amount of business that you're bringing in, once you can start to see or when to pitch offers or what's the yeah. best way, what way works best to sell. So you're going to increase your sales definitely. Yeah. Um, you're talking about improving your quoting, you know, your estimating process. Mm. So the more information you know about your budget versus actual, the better you can improve your estimating process. And with that as well, with the estimating or maybe quoting, I've noticed the metrics can um, also give you a bit of insight over what stages of that process Mm -hmm. your is is letting you down the most. Absolutely. So is it the stage where... You know, you've you've taken the call and then you go to submit the pro- proposal. Is that yeah. what is that what's letting down, or is it the stage where people have the proposal 
and then they're not ready to act. Is that yeah. what, is that what's letting you down? Like, what can you then like for me? It was a case of okay, well then, what can I now build into this part of my equation, which is going to uh, make that a little bit more slippery and make yeah. it run a bit better? Yeah. Know? Well, as you said, if it's you're falling down, you send a proposal off and you're not getting a response, or yeah. you find that's where the, the process falls. Well, you go and get some education on that particular part of your business, and you improve your system for doing that, yeah. and thus increase the number of you know acceptances you get yeah. uh, for your proposal. Or you, you know you improve how you quote if you're falling down and that you're always going over budget. Well, you know, well, you know what? We've got to go find a supplier who provides a cheaper product because we know we can't increase our prices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of insights you can get. I think it's good too, because I, I've noticed since I've started taking a real interest in this kind of stuff, it's amazing. Like when you sit, sit back and look at it, some of the things are just so unbelievably obvious mm. and which is good because it means they're easy to fix. It's just a matter of getting out there and fixing them. Yeah. But and, until you're sort of in that space of, well, okay, what am I actually trying to measure here? Then, you don't really, you don't really even look at it. You never batter, right. batter, batter all of it. Yeah. So let, let me give you, I guess, a, a summary of the areas that you want to measure, and yeah. then that's going to change. What specific is going to change depending on your business? Okay. Cool. Well, we'll do this as the. Um, how about we do this as the summary for this episode? Sure. Done. Okay. Great. Go ahead. So the areas you want to. Measure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm jumping ahead. The areas you want to measure in your business. First of all, you know the effectiveness of your marketing. So how many leads are you generating? When are you generating? What are you doing when you're generating? You know, what campaign are you running? How? And how? You know, mm-hmm. where are they coming from? Where's the lead source? Then when you're selling, what is your conversion rate from the point that someone's connected you to actual jobs? How much do you have in your pipeline? Can you forecast the value of your pipeline going forward? How much money do you have sort of on the books ready to sell versus already sold? Uh, and that really leads into your sales performance as well, which is you know, how much are you selling at different periods? Moving out of sales then into your estimating, um, you're looking at you know, what traditionally are our actual moves versus what we originally estimated. What are our margins that we're making on our cost base? And what is it costing us to actually deliver work? Uh, and how can you, know, and from that, then for, define what builds up that cost so that we can start to work out where to reduce it. Mm-hmm. What component of that is spent on labor? So measuring your labor numbers, you know, how many hours are we spending per job, either on average or for certain types of jobs? Um, and then moving into your admin the amount of hours and time that you're spending on admin per job. So what's your overheads? So would that be, are you talking about chasing the... Chasing, yeah. You you might think, oh, you know what? I I can sell a job and I know from my metrics that it costs me a hundred bucks to sell a job. I deliver it for a thousand bucks and it costs me 600 bucks. But what you may not have measured is the fact that there's an admin person running around, you know, doing an invoice chase up. Yeah. Four times before they get paid, which costs another hour of work. Yeah. Uh, you know, another 25 bucks multiplied by 100 clients starts to turn into quite a lot of money yeah. and a lot of labor cost. Yeah. And that's excluding all the financial stuff at the end, which, you know, your PL and yeah. your cash flow. No, it's a pretty good framework. We might even, um, might even get you to, maybe we might do an infographic or something like that for the, for the show notes. Well, there's a lot to go through as well. Yeah. You know, it's not a simple topic. There's, What's best to measure is going to depend on your business and what is important to you. Yeah. Uh, But if you start at the sales and the marketing side, because at the end of the day, you generate more business, the better. Yeah. So start there and then slowly progress through your your jobs. and. um, Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty safe thing to do, isn't it? If if you can work on, I suppose, primarily, if nothing else, work on the metrics around getting leads in and Mm -hmm. converting those leads. And then once you've got that happening, then you can sort of tweak what you're moving forward from there. Keep going. Yeah. Okay, cool. I think that pretty much wraps up that episode. Is there anything that you think we've missed there in measuring your metrics? No, look, I mean, it's hard to say which tools are best because now you're talking like Mm -hmm. every software database in the world, you know, it's um, it's hard to recommend any given package for your particular industry and Mm -hmm. to measure exactly what it is that you want to measure. It's a pretty wide pretty broad thing so um i guess you just got to start somewhere yeah i would say maybe a good place to start would be getting a cloud-based accounting package because that will give you good visibility over things like quotes that you sent out it'll give you or proposals or whatever you want to call them it'll give you 
uh, visibility over your acceptance rate. It'll give you visibility over jobs won against jobs lost. It'll tell you what you're turning over monthly, quarterly, annually, weekly, whatever you want. It will also give you a breakdown on the value of your customer. So you'll learn, you know, what, what your metrics are in relation to, you know, what a, any specific customer is worth to you in an ongoing pattern. So that's probably, I'd say, a good place to, good place good place to, start. to start. And then, yeah, look, moving forward, there's all job management, project management, and all yeah. these other things that can help you tweak the running of the business. But, um, you know, I think that's pretty much, pretty much sums it up for me. Yeah, you go. That wraps up this series, which is Empire Building. I just want to say thank you very much, Scott, for joining us on uh, this series. I certainly certainly couldn't have done it without you. Well, mate, uh, I actually really enjoyed it. And I think I might have even learned a few things from you. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Really well, loved it. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd believe that one if I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I hope everybody out there in trade land got a bit of value out of it and, you know, understand the difference, I guess, between just sort of running in your business and doing your day-to-day versus actually being, you know, a business owner, um, systemizing your business so it can scale, yeah. um, understanding how you can leverage a database to massively increase you know, yeah. the, the amount of sales you're doing and then knowing your numbers at the end so you can make smarter decisions in your business yeah. to grow the business that you've set up as a nice scalable entity. No, that, that's that's good takeaways there, actually. I'd, I'd say my takeaways would be relatively similar from, similar from that. Firstly, it's all about really... If you can employ systems and processes into your business, um, it will free you up to do whatever it is that you actually want to do at or what, what is in the best interest of your company for you to be working on. It might be staying on the tools. It might be chasing leads or putting out proposals and quotations, whatever it is. But um, if you've got processes in place, then you can remove yourself from the tasks that aren't generating your, your company money and you can focus on what's important. From the building the database point of view, you've just got to just start doing it. It's really simple to get it happening, even at the even at the entry level of putting phone numbers into your into your phone and exporting it into an Excel spreadsheet, whatever it is. Just make sure you've got some way of capturing your data, the data of your leads and your customers, and then measuring and understanding your metrics. Well, look, I mean, if if you've got an accountant or a bookkeeper, uh, they'll be telling you exactly the same thing. Just get out there and start doing it and take an interest. It may not be something that is overly exciting at first, but I can guarantee you, because I've just been through this path myself over the last couple of years, you know, once you do start looking into it, it actually doesn't, it becomes less of a chore and sort of more of a, oh. more of a hobby. Well, that's how, when your systems are in place, it all should actually produce itself. Right. Yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah, once again, thank you very much, Scott, for joining us on this. How can, how can we find you if anyone wants to? Yeah, great. Just uh, go to www.boloempire.com.au. That's B O L L O empire.com.au um, and you can contact us and book in a call from there. Excellent. And are you, um, are you active across social media as well? Yeah, absolutely. So you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash follow empire and twitter.com slash follow empire as well. Fantastic. All right. Well, um, that pretty much wraps up this series. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. I hope you got something out of it. If you did get something out of it, please make sure to uh, head across to iTunes and leave us a review. You have no idea how much it helps the, uh, the podcast. And it also helps us spread the word to people like yourselves who are benefiting from it. And if you haven't yet been across to the siteshed.com, uh, you can go across, head across there where you will, you can um, actually join our community of global-based trade entrepreneurs and um, you'll get sent episodes just like this and other information straight to your inbox. You haven't even got to go looking for it. So uh, that's a wrap from me and we'll speak shortly. So if you haven't already, head across to the siteshed.com and register for our toolbox talks where you'll be regularly sent great episodes just like this straight to your inbox so you'll never miss one. Uh, if you want to join the community, you can head across to the siteshed.com forward slash members where for a small monthly fee, you'll get access to regularly updated training material as well as access to our forum where you can mingle and collaborate with trade-based business owners just like you from all over the world. If you're enjoying this podcast, please head across to iTunes and leave us a five-star review. We greatly appreciate it and it helps us spread the word and reach the masses. Likewise, if you know anyone that might benefit from the content we create, then please go ahead and share this with them. You've been listening to Toolbox Talks by The Site Shed. For more great content just like this, head across to thesiteshed.com and join the amazing community of savvy trade-based business owners. 